Today we're doing an inventor's house. Let me back up there. Focus. So the overall shape is going to be kind of like a light bulb. Not really. There's going to be actual light bulbs up at the top. And then we've got a couple of buildings or like smaller sheds, like all connected on different areas. So there's a couple of things to review before we get to it. I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper for practice and a ballpoint pen. And do a little bit of review. As always, our horizon line will show us whether we see the top of something or the bottom of something. So if I have a cylinder or part of the building that is above this line, then I will not see the top of the roof. I'll see the under part of the roof. Hello. And I will see a little bit of the under part of the building, like if this were a water tower or something, we would see the underside because it is above the horizon line. If this same building were below the horizon line, very close to us, we would see the top of the roof. And we would not see the bottom of it, even if it were another little short water tower, we wouldn't see the underside. Something else we're going to be doing for this inventor's house, we're going to have, oh, I looked up the word, what it's named, one of those wind things with the cups, anemometer or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's a wind thing. That's a wind thing, right? Okay. So a little bit like our, wind, um, not wind chime, weather vane. My goodness, I can't think of the words today. I'm going to have my little X crossbars. And at the end of each of these is like a little cup and they're all pointed in the same direction. So let's say I've got one over here where I can see the inside of the cup. I'll put some shading in there so we know that that's the inside of the cup. That means the one on the other side is going to be faced in the opposite direction. We will not be able to see it. So we'll just see kind of a half sphere on that side. And because they're all facing the same direction, I have to imagine if this one was rotating all the way over there, we would see the back of it. So that one we're not going to see any opening. But then opposite on the other side, we will see that opening or that inside of the cup. Something else to practice real quick. We're going to do some lifted panels. On this inventor's house, there's a couple of places where there's paneling, but then one has been propped open maybe to get some airflow in there, let some fumes out, something like that. We're going to practice a couple of how do we lift these things up and away from the rest of them. So for instance, there's a roofing part right here. So I'm just going to sketch out a little curved portion of a roof. And normally when we start putting shingles or tiles on it, we just start radiating our lines from either side. But once we get to the middle here, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to sketch out kind of a letter L shape. Something like that and color it in. That's going to be the inside of the building and this particular tile is being lifted up. So to finish off this tile, I need to show the thickness on the bottom, which is going to go past that letter L. And voila, now this one is sticking up. Right now it's just hovering there by magic, but if it needed to be propped up, we could put a little prop stick right there, kind of hold it up. 
because we can see the top of it. It must be below the horizon line, but what if it were above the horizon line? Well, we happen to have that in our drawing as well. We would see the underside of that roofing. I'm going to curve my line that way. Do the same kind of setup, just like a little half portion of a roof. And normally we have our tile on the sides here. But we have one that's lifted up so high that we can see the bottom side of it. And here's the opening. Need some thickness. Color that all in, that's the inside. And we'll see the thickness on the end here. Again, this is floating right now. Maybe there's a little support that pops out, holds it up. And we can lift up that tiling. Oh, and one more thing. Usually we're doing bricks or stones, but today is a lot of like sheet metal that's all put together. And because we're making an inventor who's kind of slapping this stuff together, we're going to have a lot of pieces that don't align in like a regular pattern. It's all going to be these scrap pieces that have kind of been bolted together willy-nilly just to make this siding. So a lot of these lines are going to just intersect on one area. So to make that pattern, let's say I've got a piece of siding here or a little part of the house. Whoops, let's get on camera. There we go. So again, before we were doing very regular patterning with our bricks and such where we'd have and horizontal lines and everything was nice and symmetrical. This time we're not. We're going to think, oh, there was a patch of metal that was put maybe right here. And we'll bolt it on. But underneath that piece of metal, there happened to already be two pieces of metal. So we might have a line that goes up. And in fact, this one was a piece. So we'll make the whole shape. And then maybe some invention exploded and we needed a little patch over here. Bolt it on. And before that, maybe there was a very awkwardly set in metal piece behind it. So we're going to have a lot of these where it looks like maybe pieces of paper were all kind of slapped and glued on top of each other. Every once in a while, we'll have one of these on the side that pops out, like let's say this one is a thick piece of metal and actually pops away from the contour of the building. So I have my walls here, but this part sticks out. It's so thick. If it's so thick on that side, guess what? It has to be thick on this side too. So we might put a little thickness along here. I'm going to color it in so you can see it a little better. Like that. So that's going to help us give our inventor's house more of a patchwork feel. I'm going to switch over to my good paper, my cardstock, or a sketchbook if you're using one, something like that. And again, we're going to go for kind of a light bulb shape, a big tall tower. Let me darken my camera a little bit here big tall tower that's going to have the inventor stuff at the top and then we'll have a couple of more little buildings little door that are kind of attached on but we really want this part to be the biggest over half of the entire height so I'm going to start with that section and make it fill a little over half of my paper just the edges there Be a little bit closer at the base, a little farther away at the top. 
and then I'm going to see the underside of the roof. Why? Because it is above the horizon line. So I'll draw my oval coming around like so. And right away, I'm going to give it some thickness. So I'm going to do another oval very, very close to my first one, just to give it a little bit of thickness. Then I'm going to put on my sort of domed roof. You can kind of think of a little bit like a mushroom. This almost look like the like support veins of a mushroom. I'm just going to curve my edges in and give kind of a flattish curve to the top, pretty much the same as this one here. We're going to mimic it above here. And then we've got all those little support beams. So I'm going to start with just putting one line where I want these beams to go. I don't want a crazy lot, maybe between five and seven, five and nine, something like that. I'm just going to put in five there. And then I'll turn them into pipes. So to do that, I need to have a curve on the bottom of each of these. And it also helps if you make the distance where it touches the roof a little wider and then the base a little narrower, just to show that it's coming toward us on these forward facing ones. And to give them a little more security, we're going to put an oval around the base. And just a little curve at the top to show that there is another oval securing it up at the top. We just can't see very much of it. We'll see a little bit more of it on these side ones here. Next, we've got a little portion that comes up above the roof so that we can attach these. I don't know what they are. They kind of look like oars to me. But we're going to attach those to this second portion of roof. It's going to be narrower than my first roof. Have that same curve or curvier since we're getting farther away from the horizon line. So the oar shapes on the sides are easy because they are in profile. So I'm just going to give it a little connecting stick there, angle it out, and make like a little rowboat oar. Same thing on the other side. Oops, that one got a little fat. Oh, well. Then the one that is smack dab in the middle, we're not going to be able to see the shape of the rowboat oar. We're only going to be able to see its thickness. So I want it to be about the same height as these guys, but we're not going to see any of that sideways shape. So right in the middle, I've just got this thickness. And 
And then for the ones in between, they're going to have a little bit more of a diagonal than these guys over here. So we're going to raise that angle up a little bit. And we'll see the thicknesses on this one. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. Hi. I have a question. Sure. Are the numbers always the same to get in? They should be. But if they're not, I will double check. No, I'll just, instead of taking time to always look it up, I'll just keep these numbers. Oh, okay. Smart idea. Well, smart would have been if I asked earlier. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got some light bulbs on top that kind of look like a little tower of tires or tower of donuts. Little little light bulbs on top here. I'm just going to pile some ovals on top of one another. The last one is half circle. And they don't look like light bulbs that much or like inventions all that much until you put a nice oily wire going behind and sticking in there somewhere. So then the bottom of this section of the tower is going to be fairly flat and that would tell us it's near the horizon line because the horizon line is fairly flat also. And that's going to indicate this line right here before it goes more narrow on the next section. So let's go ahead and carve off these panels right here. It's just going to have a little bit of an upward curve, just a little bit, because it's still very close to the horizon line. And we're going to try out that lifted panel that we did earlier by making that strange L shape with a pointy vertical stroke and then a thick horizontal stroke. That's the opening. And then for the thickness, we have to make that thickness extend past that L shape. And there is our panel being lifted up. Oh, kiss. I mean, I meant, okay. The rest of the panels will just make like regular, put a couple of more lines. So I have a person that just has the name of 123 Draw in the waiting room. Shall we let them in, Kristen? Sure. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and color in the opening. Who are you? Carlos? Carlos's phone? Carlos. Who are you? Shine a light on your face. <laughs> Shine a light on me. Isn't there a song like that? I think there is. Still connecting. Still connecting to computer audio, maybe. Let me try that one now. All right. Carlos. Hello. Hello. Who's, who's there who's not connected yet? 
Um, that's the one, two, three draw. One, two, three draw. Who are you really? <laughs> Welcome. Oh, I, I know who it is. <laughs> who, 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 who? Who are you? Uh, Welcome. I, I, is he in? Not yeah. yet. I think uh, yeah. needs to connect to the audio. It looks like Mickey Mouse ears. I see Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> no. Yeah, right there. Look. Connected to audio in the right lower call. Oh, you're right. In the right lower. Oh, I see him. <laughs> well, who are you? Introduce your. Well, maybe we should introduce maybe ourselves. Maybe we should introduce ourselves, huh? Okay, let me go ahead and switch back to my regular camera wheel real quick, and we'll do a little introduction here. So hi guys, my name is Betsy. I'm the lead artist and I do all the art lessons for Wednesday and Friday Zoom classes. This class is drawing houses, so we're working with ballpoint pens. So if you don't have a ballpoint pen, go ahead and grab one. And I'm doing it paper. digitally. Or digitally, yeah. Have you got digital tools? That's fine too. Or a pencil if you need to write. <laughs> <laughs> or a pencil. Just something that makes marks. Uh, normally we go around and say our name and something we like. So my name is Betsy and I like dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm Stephanie and I like fair drawing fairies. Oh. Well, Betsy. hey, I'm Kristen and um, I'll go for the Friday night second class. I like character design. <laughs> Oh, I'm uh, Mickey, and I love dragons. That was some good times painting dragons, huh? And then we lost Carlos's iPhone. Oh, no. All right, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear somebody, yeah. <laughs> That's but weird. Got... It says you're muted. Yeah, it says you're muted, Carlos. We All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can okay. hear you now. I'm Carlos. Um, I like uh, Pokemon. Oh, nice. Uh, you're in big company. And how about one, two, three, drop? Um, your name. <laughs> oh, come on. You got to have a real name. Oh, they're still having trouble connecting. So, Carlos, I don't recognize you. Does that mean you, this is your first time visiting us? Uh, no, I actually remember you. I attended the uh, the art studio at the Teen Impact Center um, months ago, like before COVID. Um, oh, wait, cool. I had much longer hair. I probably had much like more of an afro. <laughs> okay. uh, so, Carlos, you filled out all the forms and stuff. Probably in the studio, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. We just need to take attendance so that we can prove. Um, not not for myself. I believe it was for um, a youth that I took. That I took. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, a, the more we get, the better we get to have this class often. So okay. if I, I'm gonna put a an email into the chat, and then I I would like you and also one two three draw. How do I do this? Oh, there it is. To send your emails to us. So we can communicate and get you to fill out a form. Okay. So that um, message will be up there. So Hi. one, two, three, can draw. Can we yet? hear from you yet? No, I can't hear. Nope, we can't hear. Nope. As long as you can hear us, that's pretty good. Rude. If you can hear us, Get the get the email out of the chat, and after the class, send us an email so we can communicate. <laughs> oh, you can't hear. Oh, you can't hear. You can. can't hear you. <laughs> Practice your lip reading, everybody. <laughs> I think he um, said I can't hear you. I believe he needs to learn how to. Uh... One, two, three, draw. Oh, he can, we have visual. If you can hear us, give us a thumbs up. Nope. Nope, okay. Let's see if I can do it as host and 
he's trying to connect maybe his audience. Yeah, it could have been something like that. Oh, uh, there's an X there. An X where? There, it went next to his audio, it had an X. Oh, okay, it might just be something wrong with the audio. Well, luckily this is a visual medium, so. Put a little thing in it, a note in the chat. Follow along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know we've done some stuff already. Don't worry about that right now. Just leave some space at the top of your paper and we're going to work on the bottom half. And then uh, luckily for you guys, these lessons are recorded. So as soon as they're up on YouTube, you can go back and fill in the top half on your own time. <laughs> Thanks, oh, Stephanie. <laughs> oh, is that connecting to audio now? Yeah. We get to connect to audio. Okay, deliveries here. Just a second. Being a very bad girl. Come on. No lesson, Fluffy. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm going to bring in a narrower shape right underneath my tower here. Oh, um, can you send an email to classmates on some of the hubbard? Yeah, yeah. Do that one, two, three, draw. <laughs> he can't hear you. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> then we're going to have this rectangle shape right underneath that. These are all straight lines because they are near the horizon line that we've talked about a couple times. And then we're going to have another roof that I forgot to color orange. Whoops. I'll have another orange marker here. That's the roof too. We're going to draw that section flaring out. And we'll have a curve downward. Is it flaring out more on one side than the other? It shouldn't be, but it probably is on my drawing. <laughs> oh, okay. it's, it's whimsical. It's whimsical, but everything is supposed to be a little uneven. I know, but I was just worried it had to do with horizontal, vertical, or something. No, we are, yeah. we're forgetting about that in this class. Okay, fine. Then we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of tiling. I'm going to start with a little short one right there. And probably patching up a hole that happened right between two other tiles. So we put a little vertical line right underneath there. And the rest of it we can fill in with just our regular lines, a little bit diagonal. Then we're going to have this half of a dome type building. So right from the roof, I'm just going to continue down the curve. This side, we're going to add this little house later. So I'm just going to do a short little curve on that side. If it's uneven like mine, that's fine. And we're going to work on this little doorway here that has a little piece that's flapped up so that it covers the entrance. So I'm going to start with a very shallow curve on the top. And I'm also going to go ahead and zoom in for those of you who are using phones and probably have a very tiny screen. Let's see what we're doing here. I'm going to do another shallow curve that's going to be Bigger, wider. We'll go ahead and connect up those two and add a little bit of thickness. And to keep this from falling down, we're going to add a couple of support sticks.
There's one over there. And one over there. And we're going to draw the door, but because the door is being covered up a little bit by this top portion, we'll only see the bottom half of it. So I'll draw a rectangle that goes right up into that covering there. And to make it a door, what do we need? Doorknob. You can do a round one or a one that's kind of long, like a rectangle. something to indicate that's where you open it. And I'll give another little horizontal rectangle. Something to nail the vertical boards to and put some vertical lines in between there. We'll have a little welcome mat come out. So these lines are going to get wider, farther apart as they come toward us. And we'll round off right there. And from this little welcome mat, we're going to connect that back up to the side of the house. So leaving a space there for when we put our other room, our other little building. And then to show that this door is pushed back into this building here, I'm going to have a line that comes out kind of the same way as the welcome mat. And then it'll turn the corner and go around. We'll do the same thing on the other side, but at a different height level. Comes out a little bit and then goes around. If you want to add a vertical line right in there, you can do that too. Now let's have a little practice with the little side house over here. Here's what it looks like. Whoops, so let me back up a little bit so we can get both on screen at the same time. So our two big basic shapes is going to be the roof here and then a little squat cylinder for this main shape of the building. So over here I'm going to draw the roof first. A little dome, a little more pointed on top if you want to. And then the rest is a cylinder. Oops. I drew a little more roof than I needed, but that's all right. We'll just have it go right into this main building. Don't worry about any mistakes that you can't erase. We can make it work. And then the roof, again, it's not going to be regular symmetrical tiles. We're going to have one big one right on the side here. Maybe that can flap up sometimes whenever the inventor wants to stick his telescope out into the sky or something. So we'll have one big tile over here. And then we'll separate the rest into three levels. We'll have a small one on the top. And then another line right across here. And we'll separate out those into some tiles.
to hold up the roof. You can add a couple of little supports if you want to, just little tiny rectangles holding up that roof. And we're going to do some patchwork metal. So I'm going to just pick a spot and put a square or rectangle with some bolts in it in the corners to show that it was a patch job. And then from one of the sides, we'll have a line. From the other side, we'll have a line too, but not at the same level. So I don't want to pretend that this went right through and came out the other side. I want to choose something lower or higher. Add another shape. And then maybe add one more shape right on the side. Then we're going to have another building right on top or right behind that one. And you can see that the base comes right underneath that roof that we drew with the open panel. And then it'll go up to kind of the bottom part of the tower. So on my drawing here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have the base of the house come right out under here. Don't worry about if you have to make it curved or straight or whatever, because it could also be tilted away from us and that could cause some curving as well. And then the top of this building where the roof is, is going to happen just above the paneling. That one for, is uh, definitely one that we can see the under part of the roof. So I'm gonna curve that roof. And then lightly, I can connect it together. There's the side of that house. A house attachment, separate room. And then to make the roof, we know that we just have that diagonal line. Whatever curve you have on the bottom, you're gonna do it again on the top. This one has this great big pipe that connects it to the main building. So we're going to put a skinny rectangle on top of the roof and then one more that's a little thicker. So here we go. Skinny one. And one more a little bit thicker. We're back. Welcome great. back. And then wherever we connect it into the side of the building, we're going to have another skinny rectangle popping out of that building. And we'll connect it with a little elbow pipe by just making a little turn right here. And another turn on the outside. And then where the bend happens, I'm going to put a couple of lines just to show this is where some adjustments had to be made to the metal to make it bend. A little bit like a fan. And this one isn't just floating in air, it needs a little support. So we're going to draw a nice vertical line all the way down. Maybe there'll be a window here. You can put an oval. And then one more oval on the inside just to show the rim of this window. You can color it in black to show that it's open or maybe it has some like metal flaps covering it up. That can be opened at different times.
And we're going to add that anemometer. Anemometer. <laughs> anemometer. There we go. I knew it had yeah. a name. With these little cups that measure the wind speed. So first it has to stick out away from the roof. We're going to draw this X that's a little bit flattened, a little bit wide. And then on the left side, these two here, we're going to see the inside of the cup. I'm going to draw an oval on this one. Pretty squished and flat. And then draw the back of the cup there. And on the other one on the left, I make an oval and the back of the cup goes behind that stick. So I'm just going to stop right before I get to the stick. On this one, we won't be able to see the inside of the cup. We'll see the back side of it. So we don't need an oval. We'll just draw, or we don't need the inside oval. We'll just draw the outside oval there. And then on the last one, too, we won't see the inside of the cup, so we'll just draw an oval on the end. And if you want to make it a little fancier, you can put a couple of balls diminishing in size and put another little antenna. We're going to move to the other side of the picture where we have another little building popping out. Move over here. Where does this one start? Pretty much on the side of our main dome house. We'll have this piece coming out to hold up that building. So over here, I'll have a curve coming up. Pretty much a flat top support this house. And the wall for this one you can see kind of goes inward. There's a reverse curve. So you can stick out that reverse curve. And the roof can be pretty much anywhere except it'll look kind of bad if you pick one of these lines and keep it going for the roof. That'll be a tangent. We usually try to avoid tangents. I'm going to try to pick a space in between these horizontal lines for the roof to start, like right there, and then come around and we'll see the underside. So we'll loop, whoops, let me get more on camera. And loop that roof right around. Same thing, we've already done this before, so you might remember, we just have a diagonal line. And then we'll put the top line. This one's going to have a little roof tile popped up. So let's just go ahead and draw one going upward. Diagonal line. And then there will be a hole in the roof tiling here. So I'll have more diagonal lines going downward. Just to make it more clear, I'm going to color mine in. You don't have to if you don't want to. There's the opening in the roof. And it doesn't just float there. We need some little support sticks. So right from this corner here, I'm going to bring a stick down. You can see it's being propped up. And we've got another pipe on this side. So we're going to do that same process. Put a little skinny rectangle on top. And this one, the pipe gets wider at the base. So I'm going to put a diagonal line. Right there. And 
move straight up a little bit and then right into our main tower. Now I'll draw the other side too, going up and then into the main tower. What happens at the angle change? We have to put a couple of lines showing where it's bending. Radiating just like a fan. I'm going to put in one more window, this big main window in front here that we didn't get to yet. Again, if you don't have your tower yet, that's okay. You can just put it right above this open panel. Pam back. Welcome back again. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I said I was, I was going to be back last time. Oh, you're time. going to be back. Oh. Okay. <laughs> See you later. So there's yeah, the bottom right. part of my window. Yeah. Ah, where's my and you might have noticed this little triangle on the side that's going to show how that window is covered by like a little awning. So we're going to do that by going up and then another little line going diagonally. So it makes this little wedge. And we're going to do that on both sides. So it goes up, that's the actual window. And then a little diagonal line, that's like the support rods. And just like the one above the doorway, it's curved. I'm going to curve it a little bit. Curve the top. And to make it look more like a window frame, this first original rectangle that doesn't have any leaning lines, we're going to put another one inside of it so it becomes that window frame. You can't see the top very well because that awning is covering it. And then in the reference picture it had it like the shutters had been raised just about halfway. So halfway I'm going to color it in black. That's going to be the opening. And above that, I'll just put a couple of horizontal lines to show that there's some kind of shutter or blind that's been raised up. We have about uh, five minutes left. Everything else from here is what we've already done. We've already done roof tiling, so you can fill in the same kind of roof tiles for every little roof. A little bit of the metal siding we've done, so you can do that on every side of the building. Windows, we've done two kinds. There's the kind that are oval and then there are the kind that are rectangular. So you can fill it up until it looks something like our original piece. And the person who designed this house is Philippe Fernandez Morel. So whenever I do a master study, I'm going to start making the good habit of when I sign my work, my name, Betsy, we say after, meaning Somebody drew it first, we drew it after. Philippe Fernandez. Morel. I'm going to leave you guys to it for the next five minutes. If you run into a place you don't know what to do or you don't know how to do it or you missed that part of the demo, go ahead and ask me. I will be happy to repeat it, but I'm going to let you go ahead and draw as much as you can in five minutes. Excuse me. Yeah? Um, is that a little bird 
dog house. That dog house right there. This one? No. This one? Yeah. It could be. If you want to put a doggy door, you can stick one right on the side there. Ah. You can put a little dog bowl. You can put a little sign that says Fido or whatever the dog's name is. Yeah. For sure you can make it. Hey, one, two, three, draw. I can hear you now. Yep. I fixed it. Oh, What's, your name? What's your name? Oh, he's gone. <laughs> okay. My name is Anthony. Anthony, welcome. Hey, Carlos. Hey. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Anthony. Hey. Oh, let's let's see Carlos's picture. He's got it up for us. Oh, cool. Let me go ahead and spotlight your video so everybody can see. Spotlight Carlos. Nice. There's Anthony. I can't see it. Wow. Oh, Anthony. Anthony is who I want to see. Oh, Carlos. I can't see anybody. You can't see anybody? I thought I spotlighted. Oh, I have anybody. to. I have to pin them. Okay, now I've got. Uh, I've got Anthony. Anthony, hold it up one more time. Nice. Very nice. I like your windows. Oh. Okay, now let's. Now I'm gonna pin Carlos. Carlos, come back here. Go back. <laughs> Carlos, this is oh, me. very cool. Look at that flag. Whoa! Oh, oh, wait. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo. Who else would like to share? Oh, here. I'll show you. Mine is hardly done, but I've got about as much as everybody, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Somehow I grabbed a blue pen today. Oh, blue pen. Hey, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> now let's see Stephanie's let's spotlight her video. Oh, Stephanie, wait, I gotta I gotta pin people for some reason. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Stephanie, okay. yours is really cool. Uh, what are those weird things on top? I don't know. I'm great. practicing I'm practicing flags and those curly ribbon things and they're not working out, but I'm practicing. The flag is good. Yeah. Who can I show my next? Sure. Okay, hey, hold on. Give me a second. Here. Screen share. Okay, my thing. Ta da Yeah, it yeah. didn't get a lot done because I, I was gone for a little bit. Hey, it's just black, Mikey. Mickey. What? We're not I don't see anything. We don't see just, it yet. It's still low. There it is. There it hey, is. Oh. Start. Oh, you made a really nice tall thin one. Totally different. Yeah, it is digital. Wow. Still haven't cracked that box open yet. I'm scared. <laughs> That's okay. We got a class coming up for it. So. You have a month. Yeah. Oh, we got a class coming up for it? But I thought we were doing it on Fridays. No. We're going to do oh, it okay. your monthly you class. Me to, like, quickly find that uh, that little uh -huh. tutorial that I found that like like showed off like the basics of you know, like having a tablet like you know, <laughs> No, let's go back to the um to the boss and, and have a look at our actual picture again. Ooh, yeah, oh sorry, I forgot. You're the boss. Right? <laughs> I'm looking at you. Hey no. boss. Here's the real boss. Oh, yeah, so we didn't get have time to get to the mountains and clouds and trees and a little pathway and all that, but that's extra stuff that you guys get to put in and just use your imagination. I love that idea about making this a dog house. You can I do. This is, if this is an inventor's house, what might he be inventing or she inventing? So we can have you know different inventions on the ground, or maybe there's like a blimp tethered to our house here. That'd be kind of cool. One of those old fashioned with the bat wings. Anyway, put in your ideas. Just because it's not in mind doesn't mean you can't draw it. You want to add stuff and make it your own. So we're about out of time. I'm going to go ahead and start the next class. If you want to join in, you'll have to exit out of this class and then rejoin into that one. And I'll see some of you there and some of you next week. Thank you for drawing. Bye-bye. See you guys. Bye. Thanks. Nice to see you guys. <laughs>